Purdue is headed to the national championship game. We are live from Phoenix at the JW Marriott in Phoenix. I'm not going to lie. I feel pretty like bougie right now. Yeah, I do too. Something about having a driver pick you up and security detail follow you around places has you looking at life completely differently. Also, I need a tan. I woke up to a text from you this morning that said, uh, do I need to wait for security to take me to my shower? <laughs> I, I feel like I can't make moves unless I got my security <laughs> detail with me. We don't know how to do this. folks. <laughs> uh, we will have some full episode at some point where we just break down stories from the final four. It's been a great trip. For now, we're just going to talk about what we saw in Purdue's win over NC State last night. If you haven't seen it, we are hosting live shows for Bleacher Report courtside couch at the final four presented by wendy's we are lucky enough to be doing this with robbie hummel as our co-host bunch of great guests rolled through a bunch of nba stars WNBA stars last night drew Brees was there go watch it it's on bleacher reports youtube channel right now if you want to see it all uh crazy experience though and we'll be back for the national championship doing the same thing it's insane that we're doing this with robbie while purdue is about to play for a national championship yeah no it, it just makes it that much better because one we're getting the best two teams playing in the national championship game and we might if purdue wins this game they win a national championship robbie hummel is going to say to himself i remember where i was i was on the wendy's courtside couch <laughs> At, at the Final Four with Sleepers Media when Purdue cut down the Nets. Not to get ahead of ourselves, but that situation is in play. With that said, even Robbie told us last night there wasn't a ton of stress last night because it felt like Purdue was the better team the entire time. And there wasn't a moment in the game where it felt up for contest with that. I don't think Purdue played great. I think they played good enough. They shot well. I don't think NC State played well at all, missed a lot of open shots, but even if they were making them, it still felt to me like Purdue was going to cruise. Yeah, DJ Horn in the first half was, you know, hitting some very tough shots to keep them in the game. In the second half, the tough twos just didn't sustain, honestly, for everybody on the team. DJ Burns struggled uh, mightily with uh, Purdue's defense, and look, you probably got a C game out of Purdue in that one, but you got less than a C game out of NC State, in my opinion, in that game, and they needed to play their best game in order to beat Purdue. Um, you know, anytime you're able to win a game where, you know, your point guard, Braden Smith, only goes one for nine from the field, and I'm not sure what the final turnover stats were, but I remember at least four to five off the top of my head. Uh, he, he really had a really, really bad game. So uh, when you're able to win that game without him, with contributions from other guys, Lance Jones hit some big shots, Fletch hit some big ones as well, and then Zach Eady did the Zach Eady thing. Uh, you know, that, that, that game was never truly in doubt. Um, honestly, I felt that way coming in, uh, as a, just a non-Purdue fan, I was like, Purdue's going to run these guys out the gym and, you know, it, it ended up being a 13 point win. It could have been a lot larger than that, in my opinion. Uh, but there was no real stress at any point in that game for them. Yeah. It was interesting to me because we're sitting here saying Purdue played their C game, but I think almost everybody on Purdue played well except for Braden which maybe like if Braden alone isn't playing well that's enough to take Purdue down to a C because he's that important to Purdue but like I sit here looking through it now and just what my eyes showed me last night like Lance hit four threes Fletcher Lawyer hit three threes if those two guys combine for seven threes and Zach Eady plays 40 minutes like I don't think there's many teams in the country that are going to beat this team even if they're not giving you much more beyond that um but to me like Braden was a problem last night. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and not just – it wasn't just the missing the shots thing. It was – he was losing the ball a lot. And, you know, I, I remember one specific play where he had a bad gamble for a dive on a ball that meant nothing, absolutely nothing. And the minute it happened, Robbie's like, oh, that gamble's going to cost him. And they immediately hit a three directly after that. Like, he was just – there's there's one thing of playing bad and missing shots. There's another thing kind of just looking, looking out of it and shaking. And that – you know, I, obviously, I, I we think very highly of Braden. We think he's going to play well on the championship game. But let's not let's not you know get too overly complicated with this. In order for them to beat UConn, Braden Smith has to, he can't play like that. Mm -hmm. That's not going to get it done. Yeah, my Braden Smith, uh, it, most outstanding player, of the Final Four take an all time stinker. Uh, what if he goes dumb in the championship game and makes up for it? I don't think you're going past Zach Eady when you went for three points with five turnovers, one for nine from the floor. Yeah, in a game. yeah. Um, now, again, be clear. 
I believe Braden is going to have an all-time legacy performance in the title game. And I'll save that for the Purdue UConn preview. I think the kid is too good. To my eye, from we're at the 200 level front row, you know, club level, we weren't courtside necessarily. But to my eye, Braden just saw a couple shots miss early and felt sped up the whole night. That's yeah. what I saw. Like, and it's hard to shoot it, with the depth perception stuff. He just never, he never got confident. I don't think he never hit his rhythm mm-hmm. and he was kind of pressing both like with the hustle defensively and also offensively forcing some passes that weren't exactly good angles, mm-hmm. forcing some shots that were open for the most part. Cause DJ Burns couldn't guard the ball screen. Yeah. But I don't know. It just like he never got going. And to me, a, a good start for him is key. Yeah, it, it looked like and it uh, just from our point of view and my 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 standards, point, like it, it seemed to me like he was guiding the ball when he was shooting it on those mid range jumpers. It wasn't just dribble, dribble, pull up, like explode into his jump shot. He kind of was like guiding the ball a little bit. And that might have been because of, you know, the, you know, Credit to NC State, their guards were meeting Braden at half court. And, you know, Jaden Taylor and those guys, they were putting pressure on him. And they, you know, forced him into some what I what I would think were uncharacteristic turnovers for him and how good he is. But, I, you know, I I, I don't stress about it too much because me and you know that Braden's like, he, like if, if he's not anything, that dude's a killer and a gamer. Like, he's going to show up for the national ship. With that said, he did hit – his biggest shot of the night it was basically the night night the shot. night night of course he didn't do the night night though oh, yeah. why did he not do the night night because he was one for nine but you can't do the night 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 night, night at one for nine night. we're going to the title game not, at, not when you're one for nine okay. you can't night night okay all that's right. awareness all right i respect it um dj horn i thought was really good not that we need to spend a bunch of time on nc state or anything but like robbie kept saying to us like dj horn could be the best player in this game if he's the best guard nc state has a chance he was definitely the best guard in this game they still lost by 13 yeah he was making a bunch of tough twos at the start of the game and typically how those things work is once you go through the rest of the game tough twos stop falling and purdue was able to get shots on the other end and you know i thought purdue was you know for as good as they i mean they did shoot 40 percent from three they're only 40% from the field. They were missing a lot of like floaters, uh, mid-range shots at the rim, a couple layups. I know Trey Kaufman ran missed a couple layups in there. Uh, kind of uncharacteristic from two-point range for them. But uh, yeah, you know, NC State, they didn't, you know, they didn't like roll over a die in this basketball game or anything like that. They kept, you know, keeping it within, I guess, quotation marks, striking distance. But at the end of the day, Purdue even not playing their A game was just kind of too good for them. Yeah, they're the best player on the floor. They had the better coach. They had the bigger crowd. What do you want? We gotta say the crowd was insane. Purdue, Purdue traveled like crazy. It was wild in there. Yeah. It's like 70% Purdue fans. I'd say 75. <laughs> it's, <shit>. it's wild. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. And maybe it'll feel a little different for the title. I don't know that there will necessarily be more UConn fans for the championship than there were at the Final Four, but I still think this is going to be like 70, 30 Purdue at worst. I think so. That's sure. big. It That's is big. And it means um, something. So Zach Eady was Zach Eady again, of course. Uh, 20 points, 12 rebounds, four assists. I was really impressed with his passing in this game. Um, now, like, NC State didn't have an answer, and we knew they wouldn't have an answer, but they did, like, avoid foul trouble for the most part until mm-hmm. late, and then the foul trouble kind of got to him. Then they were trying to guard him with, like, Middle Brooks a little bit, but, like, you know, when they were digging down, he just made the right read a lot. And then I think that's part of why Fletch and Lance got going from three. Yeah, I mean, Zach Eady slept walk his way to 2014 and four in this game. Like, when I, we even looked at each other, I think, when we had Brad Miller on. We're like, oh, man, it seems like Edie's having kind of a quiet game. It was like midway through the first half. I was like, oh, well, he's got 13 and four. Yeah. Like, it's, he's just he's national, national player of the year shit. There's not really not much you can say about it. And for as good as DJ Burns and, you know, even like the guys like DR have been on NC State, like, it's – is Edie's just different. Yeah, he's linking up with Shaq after the game. Yeah, Zach Heel. Zach. Uh, someone, someone tweeted us and called him Torontosaurus, and I kind of like that. I like that too. I like that. There, I think, I think that was Pauly. Shout out to Pauly. There's a very nice, uh, like video package of Zach Edie's mom with like a voice note for him. Go watch that. It was cool. Just all around good vibes with this Purdue team right now, and with Zach. You're Edie. in the shit. Um, you're, you're in the shit, Purdue fans. It's crazy. Yeah. You're there. It's and it's. Well, I don't want to say it's yours to lose because you are an underdog. And we'll talk about that. But it's a semi-home game. It's a semi-home game for Purdue for a national championship. And that means the way something. The crowd is, it's that special. means something. Um, hmm. I'm looking through this. I don't think I have too much else. Like, there, 
as sad as it is to say, like, I don't think there was anything super compelling to take away from this game. Not really. They we just, knew they were way better. Yeah, than we knew they were way better than them. They got in there. They got out of there. They, you know, they, they scored. It, the game was 63 to 50. Like, it was like, it, 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 yeah, they just, they did what they did. You know, we can make some storylines out of this, but I really don't think there's, there's much else to dive into. I mean, this is the second worst team they've played in five games, at the NCAA tournament. Let's be honest about it. Like, special run from NC State. Yeah. But, you think, you think they're better than Utah State? I think they are worse than Utah State. Worse than Utah State. Okay. I do. Yeah. Okay. I, and that's no disrespect. Like, the run they've been on is special. But a big part of the run was no one could hit a shot against them. Entered the number one three-point yeah, shooting team in the shots, country. Man. They made shots. You lose by 13. Uh, Painter did say, like, we, we've talked about how we think fouls is the most important thing to Painter. Um, he says it's turnovers. Anytime they've been under a certain turnover number, they've won the game this year. Edie and Smith both had five turnovers in this game. Ten total combined from your two best players. How concerning is that going into the UConn? It, it's concerning only because, you know, the the guards defensively for UConn, they can make they can make you very uncomfortable. You know, Stefan Castle, Cam Spencer's an underrated defender, in my opinion. Tristan Newton's also pretty good with his hands. He's not like a blow-you-out-of-this-world defender. But, like, they're guards that have the size advantage on Purdue – and if you play around with the ball, you play around with your food, they're going to get their hands in there and steal the ball. And they they have to kick, they have to take care of the basketball. They mm-hmm. must. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think they will. I think a lot of the ones from this game were semi careless. Um, yeah. I don't I don't think you'll be that careless against UConn. It's going to take an A plus performance. Fouls quickly. Uh, stripes did not make this about themselves. It was a very low volume foul. They game they want game. they want to get out of there. <laughs> you liked that, I think, in general, but doesn't it kind of hurts Purdue's whole mo if we're gonna have refs that swallow their whistle, right? Yeah, but the thing is, uh, I think that also had to do with, and I, I know this is wild, but like, I think because of the opponent, I think it did factor in at least somewhat. Like when when we do the preview, I think that the refs are gonna set a precedent early with the foul calls. Okay. Like I think they're gonna make it known early. And so it's not something that you get towards the middle of the game. You're like, what's that call? Like they're going to make the call early, be consistent with it. And you can't say that they were consistent. I hate how much officiating is already part of the narrative of the title game. I know, but it has to be like, it's literally going to be like, does Klingon or Edie get a foul first? Yeah. That's going to be a huge part of the game. I hate so, stripes. Uh, strike, I guess, congrats stripes for not calling fouls. Stripes, stripes actually did great in the final four overall. I thought they were missing obvious fouls. To be yeah. Honest. Oh, Edie was like, getting hammered. Yeah. That's to me, that's not great job stripes. Like there were, there were guys. Like, it was great for me because I wasn't trying to watch that game anymore, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. like, Understood. Let's, 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 let's get out of there. We've made it this far without you addressing the fact that DJ Burns had eight points and one rebound. Yeah. I mean, he did what he did. I mean, you, you go up against the national player of the year. He did what he did. DJ, I appreciate you. I don't care about that game whatsoever. Your run will be talked about uh, in the heavy set community for years and years to come. You will always have a special place in my high cholesterol. What does this do to Fat Boy Summer? Oh, Fat Boy Summer still a go. I just had a muffin before I hopped on here. <laughs> it seems like a bad look. I'm just saying. Uh, okay, final thing for me. You know, I got to do my whole things every time we do a Purdue video. I'm just let's do a little psychoanalysis of where things stand. <laughs> Purdue is a six and a half point underdog going into the national championship game. Do I think that that is a miss from Vegas? Yes, yes. I do. I would bet Purdue plus six and a half. In fact, I already have. I would bet Purdue on the money line at the number it's on. In fact, I already have. I already had a pre-tournament bet on Purdue to win the title. I had a pre-final four bet on Purdue to beat UConn in the title. Everything culminates in my belief that Purdue is going to beat UConn, and I will speak to that more on the preview. I'm not wavering from that. With that said, I don't know why Purdue fans are upset they're six and a half point underdogs here. I don't get it. And embrace it. It's a gift. Yeah, they're it's hating. They're hating you. They're they are they. It, it's like you said. I I thought this was going to be like a four and a half, mm-hmm. three and a half type spread. Six and a half is definitely crazy in my opinion, but it's just like. That wouldn't be the angle that I'm going with. I would go, okay, we're the underdogs then. Like, let's be the underdog. We haven't, we haven't, when's the last time Purdue got to be an underdog? Well, it's a gift. It's a gift. Because be an underdog. If, if you think you're better than Purdue, then you should gas up how, or sorry, if you think you're better than UConn, you should gas up how good UConn is. So you beat them and you're, you're acting like, holy shit, we beat 
this monstrous team. We weren't supposed that's that's better. That's better than just like talking like you should beat this team, even if you believe it. Right. And if you lose the game, then you have the biggest get out of jail free card that like, oh, we weren't supposed to win this game. We were six point. Like, just embrace that. You have you literally have the best of both ways. No matter how this game goes, you have a get out of jail free card. And instead, Purdue fans are like, this is insane that we're underdogs. We should be favored. (laughs) And and for the record, like, I know Goodman's been tweeting about it. Goodman thinks it's crazy they're six and a half point underdogs. And I I think there's been some talking heads who have been, like, pretty loud that it's it's not going to be a competitive game. But I think most people that, like, know basketball, even at a national level, are expecting a great game here. Like, oh, a yeah. toss-up game. We're for a classic. Yeah. It's going to be a If it's not a classic, I'm going to be disappointed. So I just – I would encourage, like, embrace it. Don't don't be upset that you're not favored in this game or even that, like, you wish it was a three-point spread instead of a six-point spread. Like, yeah. make it make it a ten-point spread. Play the nobody believes in me card. Pull up and beat their ass. Do it, man. Yeah, could happen. Okay, anything else? Congrats, Purdue. They're really good. Yeah, it's a good team. It's been fun to watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really miss like the. It's sinking in that we only get one more Zach Eady game. Yeah, that's gonna suck. Actually, is it? Nah. Okay, the it's Michigan gonna suck. The Michigan, nah. The Michigan State fan and he's coming out. I, I'm gonna miss you, Zach. But at the same time, brother, best of luck on your next adventure. My bookie is our favorite place to place bets, and you can place bets with us. Card, tell the people about my bookie. Let me tell you about my bookie quickly here. It has absolutely everything you need. It has odds boosts, parlays, expert predictions, alternate lines, anything that you need. My bookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid. And right now we have a first deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars if you use promo code sleepers. That's promo code sleepers for I almost messed that up, Greg, but it is promo code sleepers for a first deposit bonus of up to a thousand dollars. The madness is winding down, but there's still plenty of time to get some bets out there. Do so with my bookie, the official sports book of Sleepers Media. Yeah, that's promo code Sleepers, or as Card says, promo code Sleepers. It's <laughs> promo code Sleepers. Uh, thank you, my bookie. Link in the description of this video. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video.